Hey, hello, say hello to the morons, just like you know he said in uh, what Rocket said in an, um, in yeah, Avengers right. Endgame. You know, so we'll we'll start we'll start whenever uh, whenever the team edge starts. But I had Audacity popped up, so it's just like a train wreck this time. Sorry, everybody. Uh, we'll try to be more professional okay. later. But this has been a cavalcade of terrible things it's gone wrong for me tonight. Uh, I also haven't even updated the logo in the middle, so I'm gonna do that, and then um, why don't you guys? We'll start the the actual like audio podcast in like like five seconds after I stop talking. Yeah. Well, welcome guys, and welcome to another episode of Carbonite Bounty BS with me and the nerd. So, uh, hope everybody's having a good week so far. Um, definitely a, a nice start to season four here. So, you know, it's funny we're over the halfway point. You know, it's kind of like the seventh inning stretch almost. You know, we're getting there. So, uh, hope everybody's having a good week. But before we get started and everything, uh, we have a lot of exciting things going on on our channel across all platforms. So, DP, why don't you let everybody know where to find us? Nerdsidecopedia.com, people. Make sure that you're going to our site um, and checking out all our platforms and following us on at Nerdsidecopedia on Twitter, Facebook, and also on Instagram. Make sure that you are when you are on our website, Nerdsidecopedia.com, um, you are tagging us. And also make sure that you're sharing the site. Make sure that you are listening to us and downloading our podcast on all over Stitcher, all over po- uh, Spotify, all over um, Apple uh, Podcasts, Google Play, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, we are there. Leave us some feedback too. Nurse at nursecyclopedia.com. Go on Facebook. Join our Facebook group, Carbonite Bounty BS. We got a really good, you know, Facebook group on there, and we're leaving memes and you know, comment on shows and everything that you know is Star Wars related. We love it. Um, just make sure that you're there. Appreciate that. Thank you again, DP. So, uh, you know, guys, like I said, one through eight, season four, we're over the halfway point. So, uh, leading into this, you know, why don't we start with our man hits? What are your first impressions of this season? This season is such a, an interesting topography of Star Wars, the Clone Wars for me, because it had the first, the first episode so far where I literally said no. And I basically like had to stop for a while <laughs> because I just can't deal with these with the, with this this you know going to a you know this, this they want to recreate that droids cartoon series you know what I mean they want to recreate the Ewok moment and they just do this shtick for twenty minutes and and honestly it almost made me want to stop watching the next episode and so I almost missed that really great fight between Anakin and Dooku because I almost just skipped it because I was just so frustrated um, that was kind of a low point for me I also felt a lot of self hate because. For the first time ever, I found myself thinking, thank God Jar Jar Binks was there. And and it made me feel a certain kind of way. And and honestly, your, your guy. my guy, Jar Jar Binks, I, I found myself uh, with a dearth of hatred for him this time. And <laughs> and I know that's weird because I, I am filled with such a, a large, large amount of, uh, of hatred in general uh, for Jar Jar Binks. Um, <clears throat> I want to say this: the the darkness on uh, Umbar episode was a real just highlight for me for the entire series so far. Uh, maybe my very favorite one. I watched it on the biggest screen in my house, and I felt like I was in a theater for literally the whole thing. What excellent storytelling! What excellent animation and, and design! Uh, man, I, I just so impressive, and it's so weird that they can't like string, you know what I mean? It's not a strung together list, like perfect, right? The Calamari series starts off, you know, and, and we'll talk about that, but man, yeah. I am excited for the next set of episodes because we sort of, we sort of ended on a cliffhanger this set and uh, we don't usually do that. So it's a little bit disorienting, but I can't wait for the next set. I'm excited to see how this, this Umbara uh, storyline ends, man. Uh, it's, it's man. If you have not watched any episodes of this show, I would probably say catch season four, episode seven. Definitely, definitely. What about you, DP? Oh man. Um. So I'm a, I'm a little bit like you know Hitch when that first episode is when you go underwater. I think that's where it just um it it, it just it sort of like ends it with me. <laughs> you know. Um. I'm not a big Aquaman fan, so you know <laughs> <laughs> when when they go under I, I I it was a DC movie. I like DC characters, and you know, seeing that movie actually be made was a triumph in the, in that instance. But as a character himself, knowing that we're going to go underwater is it's not it's not my bag. So the the movie was just okay with me. So watching this episode, you know, the first you know couple episodes with the underwater stuff going on, it was it was a thing where I was checked out. Um, I will have to say this batch of episodes wasn't wasn't really that 
great to me. You know, I thought, you know, the one through six was uh, one through seven. Um, it was just, I, I'm sorry, one through six because the Umbrella episode was yeah. seven, right? Um, yeah. So one through six was just, it, it was just a, you know, sleeper for me. As soon as it got to the Umbrella episode, like Hitch was saying, yes, that that's that's what I wanted to see. That was the visuals of that episode was like excellent. And Krell, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> Krell was he was just such a um, you know, it, it, we're keeping it yeah. clean, a yeah. D, yeah. you know, he was just such a uh, a you know H. <laughs> um, I mean, it was just a great thing to see that you know he was um, just going against like Rex and you know calling him by his um, his 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 um, code name and everything. You know, instead of actually calling him Rex and Fives and everything, um, it was just just the the development of that character quickly for you to actually hate him or you know to 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 you know just just feel some sort of way again, you know, with him. And he may have been right with his decisions in battle because the, um, you know, uh, LB wine and them, they needed them to, to the five one to succeed really quickly. And that's what he was there to do, push them. Um, and to see him be the sort of antagonist to what, you know, Anakin was, you know, to, for those soldiers and stuff was just a stark comparison because they love Anakin and knowing Anakin's going to be, you know, Darth Vader down the line. It's just crazy. You know, they, they love Anakin and, you know, really liked him as a leader and, and stuff and just see Krell just be so cold to these clones, you know, true. I mean, yeah, to these, um, you know, clone troopers and everything. It was just crazy. I love it. You? I love the last two. Yeah. What about you, Ken? Well, I'm sort of uh, in between, like what uh, you know, uh, Hitch and uh, DP were kind of uh, echoing. I, these weren't my favorite. Um, I'm not a uh, like uh, DP was saying. I'm not a big underwater fan. Things that take place underwater, I sort of uh, really checked out once Anakin uh, ignited his lightsaber underwater. <laughs> I thought that there was a, that's that's a huge. How did that happen? You know, and then the the laser the battles the laser battles underwater. I mean. Even if you said, uh, so this is science fiction and we're going to say that uh, light projectiles underwater will maintain speed um, across a distance of, say, 50 meters, uh, it's still a bunch of BS. And I completely didn't like any of that. I did like uh, the, the battle between Dooku and Anakin. I mean, that conflict is getting real. Um, I also like the, the Gungans taking down Grievous. I mean, that was, that was pretty awesome too, you know? Uh, so there, there were some highs. Uh, there were a lot of lows for me. Um, I liked seeing the Mon Calamari, that race kind of develop the, the Quarren also pretty cool. Give, again, developing characters that we're going to see in um, uh, Revenge of the Sith, you know, just Jedi uh, characters, uh, where, what their backgrounds were. We're going to see Kit Fisto. We saw Kit Fisto in this. It was very uh, engaging. So <clears throat> it had moments, but I sure hope that the next set of episodes go somewhere else. Like, just let's get back to let's get back to what we were doing yeah. uh, with with the clones. There was a little bit in there. The clone troopers. I want to see more of that. <laughs> more. You know, trying to you know the the uh, the Republic trying to attack the Trade Federation where they can. I want to see a little more of Sidious and back to that back to that storyline. This arc, as we call it, because we're also educated, uh, this arc story arc, it just really fell flat to me. Um, I said the underwater stuff and the and and you know, science fiction is science fiction. I get it. We can do whatever we want, but um, uh, I uh, I didn't I didn't buy it. Uh, but I'm glad everyone came through in the end, and I'm glad Prince, whatever the hell his name is, <laughs> Lee, it's Charlie, is except it's, it's backwards. It's just Charlie, yeah. except backwards. Lee Char. Yeah. That's it. It's so glad stupid. He's, he, he's people, and you know whatever. He has like so, like hippie that, beard, like bead, like beard beads. Like what's going on with that too? I need to yeah. What is me. what is all this on his head? Ooh. And he's got these things. Ooh, about in. about the design. Got yeah. the Pirates of the Caribbean Easter egg there. Right. There. Yeah. 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 He had that <laughs> going on, didn't he? I thought it was great that they made I did think it was great they made managed to make Jaws the villain. Essentially they were just like, What if we gave Jaws an <laughs> army of robots too? And I feel I'm like from that angle I'm okay with it, because that was pretty rad. Uh he was just biting yeah. biting people left and right. 
And you know, here's to your to your uh, point about the scientific accuracy of lasers in water. As some of us may be aware, a certain scientist by the name of uh, Isaac Newton discovered that water refracts or bends light, which means lasers should bend. When that would have been rad, right? They right. Gone, like, the lasers curveballs. would have been going all over the place. The lightsaber would have been doing it this. Have worked. They'd be doing and then the shark would have been the ultimate technology. And in, and in the ocean, the shark is the ultimate technology. That's why they stopped evolving 60 million years ago. So there you have it. Right. But look, but they want to stay yeah. scientifically accurate because when Anakin has to, when they have to use the force to push the bubble around away from Padme, right? It's really, really hard. And you're thinking to yourself, why is that? But when you realize they're in underwater, water pressure is really intense. So it would take a humongous amount of strength to push all the water away from that because it would be so much pressure. So they were accurate there. Yep. But water bends light. And there's la <laughs> there's lasers all over the place. <laughs> and they're trying to be accurate shooting these lasers, like I said, from 50 to 100 meters. No, you're not. It's not happening. It's just yeah. Let's 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 leave the water water um you know party. Alone. I mean one one thing I did appreciate about this batch of episodes was the body count was like absurdly high, and you saw like just the just the results of this battle. Uh, because of Krell, I mean he was just like you know because of his orders he was just you know it, it didn't yeah mm -hmm. left and right. <laughs> well, look, like, here's the thing, like, the, the Clone Wars are a civil war, and if you think about the American Civil War, after, like, 1863, the pace of everything picked up, and bodies were getting ground down into nothing, because they sort of moved into this pseudo-trench warfare, almost like World War One. So the technology changed, and so did the war, and that happens in every war. I mean, if you look at the armies in 1939 versus 1945, or 1914 versus 1918, they're very, very different by the end of the conflict, and what's happening is, you know... I, they're all getting ground down. Everybody's dying. Like everybody that's fighting this, we have gun guns dying. We have we see Mon Calamari die by the score. We see Corin die by the score. The only thing, the only people we didn't see die were those pygmies, right? That was pretty much it. They got through pretty okay, so good for them. They just had an earthquake, right? And that's like, but you got to take, you got to count your blessings, I guess. So the body count is stacking up here in the at the midpoint, and we're just we're just here. So like the worst of the war is yet to come and we are just feeling yeah. the weight of this of this um attrition as it as it takes the humanity from the jedi and man oh man i i understand why the clones were okay with sort of order 66 at this point right except who who do they well, stay loving who do they stay they never ever betray anakin even when he's darth vader yeah. he's still hanging out with them like in 20 years later so wow it always gets worse at the end because just like just like poker, the last hands, it's all in. So they put all the troops in, and it becomes a trench warfare. Infantry uh, right on top of infantry, a lot of death. You're gonna have a lot of dying, and that's where that's where we're at. That's where we're getting at the beginning, the end of the Clone Wars. It's just massacres because the the generals are putting everybody in in big clumps, and they're just wiping each other out. But why? Why the attrition? And, and this is why all the episodes from last season that showcased Palpatine, like that, that, that shot they did where they zoomed in on him thinking for like literally three seconds sells all of this to me totally because he's taking Anakin away from them and giving them a Jedi who's awful, who's going to make them hate the Jedi, who's going to make them yep. never trust the Jedi again because the Jedi waste their lives. And let's also point this out. The Je these, these 501st troopers that have developed personality and fought with the Jedi over and over have developed a closeness to them. They've developed a bond, and that's going to be harder to break. And I think Palpatine knows that. And so he's grinding them out in a very gross meat grinder. He's getting them rid of, he's getting rid of the veterans to let the new bodies take their place. And these new Jedi know that to win, they have to just shove their men forward, and that's just how it is. But if you're a clone... I mean, that shortens your lifespan by almost six months. So you can't have that. So is yeah. that the reason why he pretty much takes um, Anakin off the, the board and puts Krell in? I mean, well, I mean, what what do, you, what do you think about that, um, Mitch? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of, I'm kind of there with uh, Hitch as well. So Mitch and Hitch. <laughs> that's a future, future show. Future show. But, uh, we only no, talk I mean, about kind of episode a... eight every week. It's the only thing we talk about. <laughs> but, uh, yeah i mean it's just it's it's weird to see how it's kind of playing out and to kind of piggyback on everybody's thoughts on these episodes 
it was, it, I mean, we don't want to say it, but I guess this is our first point of saying these to me felt like filler episodes. I think they could have done a lot more with the eight. I mean, they could have did two underwater, but seeing how no. this is playing out, um, I, I do like the development of the characters. I, I see everything like, you know, like we're talking about a chessboard. I see the pieces coming together now. I can see what they're doing with Anakin. And the crazy thing is, you know, with this turmoil going on, the Jedi at this point are blind. It's like they don't have their sense of the force to feel to see into the future because Yoda is just, you know, sending troops in. And the crazy thing is, like we're saying, we're, they're sending younglings out there. I mean, they threw Ahsoka to, uh, you know, a Jedi Knight that has never had a Padawan and said, hey, I need you to train this girl. And also she's going to be part of the battle. I mean, she's front line with Anakin and Obi-Wan. So it shows desperation on the Jedi Council's point, And it's kind of like at this point, were they too lax? I mean, you know, and we'll get into this maybe other other uh, shows, but, you know, what are the other factions of the Jedi? This seems to me like these are all infantry warriors. Where are the people who were looked at as detectives? You know, the different means of just a Jedi Council. So at this point, they're stretched. I mean, you can see, I mean, you know, Palpatine sitting in the chair just laughing at them all, literally pulling strings. And the Jedi are running around, sacrificing their pawns, their pieces, their their clones are falling left and right. Um, we're seeing the Gungans and, and just all these people that were part of the Republic to fight, you know, what would be the Empire later on. It's just a, a, a giant sacrifice. And it seems pointless, you know, that they can't see this or stop it. It's it's something about the way Yoda talks about how he sees the future and how it changes and how it's in motion that makes me think about Palpatine's plan here. And I, and I think about trying to explain to myself in the year 2010 today history right we have the pandemic the whole trump like experience the whole thing right like just trying to get that across and could i do it in two minutes and the answer is no and it's because time moves in one direction for us we don't see the future we we can see the past but only in memory and what I'm, what i'm getting with this is that if you want if a sith empire started and there was mass death and destruction it would be if you were seeing like a a mountain of suffering in the distance you'd be able to see it from afar right Unless, of course, right. there's a way, way bigger mountain in front of it. And then you can't see it. And what this is, and what this yeah. is selling to me more than anything else, and I know I'm being the hype man for these episodes because I like them more than Ken for the first time and that we've watched anything. <laughs> I had a better time watching these. But, but you can see how that mass death, which they're showing us now, it's not just robots, it's not just clones. It's the sentient creatures that are dying. This is blinding the Jedi, like you're saying, Mitch. They cannot see the future. They can't see what's right in front of them. And that is that, you know, it's because they sort of started this. They're the ones that are going into it. So how could they be leading the Republic into destruction? It would take a real chess master to get you there. And man. But it, it's always clouded. The future is always clouded. Yoda could never see anything. It was always some, it was a cloud. It was, a, oh, the Sith this, the Sith that. So this is, that's not a new thing. It's not a new idea i don't think the jedi really have much clairvoyant ability to see anything i think they are in the now i think they can react quickly but i don't think they know what's coming down the road you know especially not with sidious playing both sides of the field clouding everybody else's judgment with the, with the dark side i mean i think that uh i think that the i in this case in this storyline in this arc I think the dark side is the winner. I mean, I think they are really, you know, they've got the best people. They've got the best technology, the best court system and the, the Republic and the, the, uh, the light side of the force is sort of fading. It's sort of a faint little puff of magic. Uh, and I think the dark side is the true power here. And I think it's being wielded properly. I think the weapon is being used properly and the people have the proper training to use it. I don't, I think the light side is a little bit nah, off. In you, this. you know what, you know, what really makes me watching these episodes and then even tying this in to even the latest sequel trilogy. Um, it really goes to show really, and it's sad to say how bad of a, you know, uh, master Jedi or, you know, that obviously master Yoda was, I mean, Think about it if you break these episodes down, what we watch, what we're talking about, to even his eventual death at the end. This all started because he made the, Je the Jedi linear in one way, 
as Qui-Gon was more viewed as a gray Jedi because he had sense of thought, love, and he wanted Obi-Wan and he wanted Anakin in the future to be able to have those emotions. This all goes back to one thing and in the one episode, which is why I tell you guys it was the best part of it. When we talked about the wills and then the three wills that we met, their books are the books that the Jedi had in which he said that the Jedi don't believe in this place anymore. Well, there were Jedi pre this era that believed in the wills that read the journal of the wills as well which later on we find out were books and as you learn with ray even you know they were shut off of that part of the force why i'll never know if if they felt that it might make too many jedi unstable or not being able to see but until they really harness the belief of the wills and really harness you know the other side of the force as luke did at the end you can see really how the jedi kind of went the wrong way in the wrong direction and they literally became military soldiers at one point i mean at this clone war they're soldiers they're not really jedis or defenders of the peace as we once thought so it really opens my eyes to really how bad the council was ran um you know going into everything were they the books that were in the cave that yoda that that burned up they were alluded to them yeah but it's not a, it's not confirmed i mean he says like you know those old books but you know as Tom will know in the expanded universe or legend, <laughs> they are they're, they're they're known as they're known as the Book of the Wills, but and they don't officially say it. It was like kind of like an Easter egg. Okay, I wonder because the original, like the Star Killers, was the original book, like the title for the original yeah. book, Star Killers, uh, Book of the Wills, like that was what A New Hope or Star Wars was supposed to be called. Right when it, it went to print, they just called it star wars and i, I think lucas that. did that just to, because he wanted it to really allude to the 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 past where it all came from but uh, i think he got an idea that it like might be too confusing so star wars is wars among the stars so he wanted to make it a very open-ended story because he wasn't really sure where he was going to go with but the original was star killers book of the wills so i wonder where if that's in there in the in the lore and the expanded universe vibe um, somewhere that verbiage the wills were a big part of the force he just for whatever reason uh and he's interviewed I, there's interviews on the internet if you dig for him he wanted to go with the idea of the wills they wanted to do that in the prequels there's a couple interviews you have to find and dig for him but there's a reason why he didn't go that i don't think he thought he thought it was too risky because this is what early 2000s one two three i believe 99, right 2002 yeah. 2000. at the time yeah at the time right. these yeah at the time these came out i don't think he thought would be a hit so he kind of went with that idea but they went with the midichlorian idea rather than uh, the wheels and how the force is balanced so uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> Or M count, as we say, yeah. What is that? The M it's count. over nine thousand. Oh, yeah. ah! <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do Dragon Ball Z yeah. all day over here. Yeah. You you guys didn't prefer the minicloridian? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense because it's like it's like look if if the sport if the force is essentially VD, like is that like cool? And the answer is no. And also, had having a real physical, measurable like quality about it means that it's something that you could like inject into someone right i mean if it, you could just get harvest a bunch of midichlorians from people and shove them all in one person and it would boost it up those sort of mechanisms are appropriate in certain science fiction i thought uh like t mitch was saying that uh this sort of like a uh, uh, mythical sort of whimsical sort of ethereal star wars is better but i, I know mileage will vary on that but for me midichlorians were a big like a big wet fart but Hey, everybody's going to have a different, a different view. Well, I thought the midichlorians, I mean, the idea is everybody has them. You have them. I have them. T. Mitch has them. DP has a ton of them, right? So it just depends. People have, you could have more or less. If you have more, then you have more attuneness to the force, to other things, right? So everyone has them. It's not necessarily you have to, like, you, you inject it into somebody. We all have it just some people have more than others and yeah uh, anakin I, had way more he than had, uh, yeah yeah I, I remember that line of dialogue qui-gon jen was talking about how you know yes. people had midichlorians and you know how how um anakin's was just super high and he wanted to take a, a the sample and just investigate that and everything you know um to see why it's like you know midichlorian count was just so high so i do remember that line of dialogue yeah here. 
he said that into a lady shick because that's what they use for that prop that he talked into. It's actually a lady shick if you look at it. It's kind of hilarious. Uh, anyway, anyway, that's my that's my my new production knowledge that obviously doesn't help anybody. Uh, man, if you t- how, how does Krell become a Jedi? I mean, okay, is is. <laughs> That's that's it. The, the way the way I mean, just uh, you know, not to interrupt you. No, you no, know, no, no, please, 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 please. But me. but but Krell, I mean, he he's he's I, I, I he's a fascinating character to me, um, because he's a trope character of you know of an importance and you know in a, in a battle scenario where a troop you know a, a general a commander you know just comes in just does a whole one eighty on what the other commander you know did Anakin you know. Um, and commands his troops in a different type of way where the the I, I just love the whole like, you know, narrative about, you know, troops obeying their orders and questioning their general's orders. But there's still orders coming from, you know, they're, they're still orders. They still have to abide by them and obey them and everything. And the clone troopers are made to obey orders. So when uh, was it Rex or um, the Fives just actually questioning, do they really... Uh, I think Foz was talking to Rex, talk about, do you really believe what he's saying? Or is that just something that was programmed into you? Something like that. Um, I thought that was really like, you know, really great character development for, uh, you know, these clone troopers again, because they, it's just, it's just all about them, this whole series anyway. Um, but if, for them to, you know, have so much pushback and to actually go in a different way from what Quirrell wanted them to do, it was it was just it was just my it was a really good thing for those last two episodes for me to see to keep me engaged. Something happened. <laughs> you know, uh, Dan Dan Carlin, who's a really uh, who's a famous history podcaster, and again the Venn diagram is such that if you know us, you know him. Uh, he he says that there's a certain line at which soldiers just won't follow orders. If you order them to certain death at a certain point, they're just going to go no, they'll just stop doing it. And that seems to be what, what Krell is is sort of. Uh, getting out of the clones, which is hard to do. I mean, they really have a high tolerance for casualties for sure. And that's bred into them, right? They're okay. Yeah. It's sort of okay with the risk uh, of, of doing the job. It's interesting to, that the Jedi are portrayed as like chess players, you know? And, and and if you think about it, if I win a chess game, do I care how many pawns I have left at the end? Or does it not matter? It doesn't matter, right? So if I play a game... That's why, that's why they're pawns. They, they, they're the first ones to go. Exactly. So the the question is, what is the dignity of a clone? And it, it is an interesting philosophical question. Uh, obviously, for Anakin, the clones have a lot of dignity, and he's very attached to them. And for Krell, obviously, he's willing to sacrifice them. He sees them as pieces in a larger game. Uh, the question is, who is right and who is wrong? And, uh, you know, if Krell's actually right about the things he has to do, and if he needs to press the frontal assault to draw more attention away from what Obi-Wan's doing, it could matter that he's actually having them suffer these casualties in a pinning move. But, I mean, it's only human to want to live, right? So you understand what the clones are doing and saying. Right, yeah, yeah. The clones, I mean, they're brothers, you know, they're pretty much, you know, you know. You Identical know, um, triplets, essentially. Feeling- a billion right. times over. <laughs> exactly. So they care about one another. And their question is, do they need to sacrifice so many troops to in order to accomplish the uh, particular goal? They want to do it a different way to um, secure more troops. I mean, to, um, you know, save more troops and everything, which is fine. But the general sees a whole overall, you know, um, thing. We need to get this done and get it done quickly. Mm-hmm. So I don't care how many troops I need to sacrifice. <laughs> you know, we need to just get this done. And um, the, the 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 trooper, the clone troopers, was like, okay, um, well, Anakin's out in the field with us and everything. So we we he has our respect like that. Krell is just like on the mountaintop, just overlooking everything, and you know he doesn't have that that, that respect and stuff. But he's still a general. You gotta you gotta obey his orders, right? Yep. You know. So it, 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 at the episodes did ask that a really good question. Um, um, with Anakin's um, um, general style versus commanding style versus um, Krell. Those those shots where he's walking, he turns his back on them and walks away, and you give and they let that shot linger for a couple seconds, and they turn <laughs> the camera around and you see all the clones staring bullets into his back. You know, you can tell that that you can tell how pissed off they are, even though they're in their identical, you know, their helmets with their with their differentiating paint. 
but you can tell how pissed off they are at this guy. And man, does that ever start ringing a bell and saying, get ready for some stuff that we saw in 2005 that is coming up for these guys in their reality. I mean, it is foreshadowing with a capital F and, and that is, you know, exactly what a show like this that is fixing, filling in the gaps that we missed. That's what it's supposed to do is drop those breadcrumbs to land the punch of episode three, the way it should have landed when they actually would have had this series have been made in the middle, right? If it had been produced in the order in which it is exists. So, Oh yeah. If, if this was produced like um in the middle and actually had time to breathe. Yeah. Episode three probably would have landed. It would have been, it would have probably done like double the, the well, box, box office. Is nothing, dude. I am. I am so <laughs> like, it's almost like, you know, you know, uh, you know, the Grover book, there's a monster at the end of the book. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's a Sesame Street thing. It's a cute thing for kids. And you flip the page and Grover's telling okay. you, okay, Grover's telling you at the end of the book, there's a monster. Don't turn the page. And you turn the page. And then he's like, why did you do that? There's a monster at the end of the book. I'm going somewhere. Where are I'm going we? somewhere with this. So you turn the page and he's like, you're crazy. Why are you doing that? There's a monster. And at the end of the mo- and at the end, it's Grover, right? And you knew it was there the whole time. Cause it's a Grover book, right? He's on the cover. So, Episode three is the monster at the end of the book. We know it's going to happen, but we're terrified of it the whole time. It's excellent. A great analogy. That's right. Yeah. And that's why we should go to break scene because I yeah. did a good one. <laughs> with, <Yeah>. that, <laughs> with that, we have a pre-cut commercial to insert. So that's, uh, that's going to happen. BRP. <laughs> Two and two. Back. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just I'm the one that did the bump. Why'd I do that? That's this is my show. Teammates, you gotta uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. No, you, we we led the bump, so you know. You know, without further ado, we're gonna head to our intermission here and we'll be right back, guys. Two and two. So it's your boy DP. Make sure that you guys are sticking around. At the end of this episode, we will be interviewing Marvin Wynn, the creator of the Edge Comics. His comic is currently on Comixology, so make sure that you guys are checking that out. And um, just stick around for the interview. We got some good stuff to talk about, you know, what he's doing and, you know, how he created the Edge and what the future of the Edge will be. So make sure you guys check it out. Stay tuned. And we're back, guys, after the intermission. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, as we were discussing previously, and I have a really, really, really good question to pass to the team, as well as something we can ask everybody who's out there listening and watching us live on Facebook. I mean, what we're discussing about how the clones, you know, kind of feel and how they're starting to question how things are, it, it makes me st- tend to believe when Order Six really ha- Order 66 really happens, how much of it really is the thought or the execution order or how much is is it kind of angst towards the jedi at this point because as we get to that end it's almost like a hatred like you know what i'm just tired of this like let's just let's just end them like you know I, to me it's starting to feel like it's not only an order but it's kind of like you know them banding together be like i'm done with the jedi it's like you know kind of like betrayal and it's not even just sidious i think it's just you know they see their brothers die we've seen it earlier it's kind of like a compound thing they're just sick of it they've had enough I, I I totally agree. I think we say, I think when Order sixty six is initiated, they're like, yes, finally. I mean, it's just a it's just a relief yeah. because they were just waiting for it. They were all thinking, man, I want to clobber these guys. We're just done with this. All of a sudden, Order sixty six. Now we can. Oh, it's cool now because I think the moment where a soldier starts to question their orders is when it becomes personal. Mm-hmm. When something that they're told to do affects them in a way that's that's personal because up until that point if you're telling me i need to go and complete this mission and yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna take some some folks out you know i'm gonna kill some people all right but then all of a sudden if i know who those people are or if it's a child if it's an innocent and that happens to strike a chord with me you've you've just deactivated the soldier in me you've just turned it off you know so i think order 66 was that moment and I think they were all appreciative of it. I think they all were like, finally, now we can, we can, we can make ourselves feel better. You know, we can stop feeling guilty for all of this. That's pretty bleak. Uh, you know, I, 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 I have been watching these episodes in, 
in 80 episode chunks like you guys. And if I were had no idea what was going to happen, I would be shocked by epi- by Order 66 when it happens. It would shock me to the core that, that the clones could, could do that. But this would be the first thing I would look back and go, well, there was there was Krell. There was, you know, there was Episode 7. Uh, it's the first inkling of that. And it's interesting because... You know, I'm thinking to myself as we watch the, you know, we watch the Clone Wars move on. What have we seen bureaucratically? Well, we spent all this time talking about the order of new clones from last season, right? It wasn't just this. It was like a lot of the action in the Senate was about this order. And it makes you wonder when was the Order 66 piece baked into these clones? Was it done before? Do all the clones have that? Or is it something that only the newer ones do? And we have to cycle them through the process, right? Because why else would you have have to have this increased attrition? Why wouldn't you do like Anakin does, right? And this episode, this, these episodes are designed to make us think why somebody would be stupid and waste their resources, right? Why would you do it? There has to be a reason. And for Palpatine, this master strategist, to send a a general who is has been giving this enormous responsibility, mostly because they are grinding out the clones and destroying the resources of the Separatists at the same time, that's an effective way to win a war where you have a resource advantage. It really is. That's essentially what the North did in the Civil War. It's really what they did. They said, we're going to strangle horde you, and then we're just going to produce so much stuff you won't be able to beat us. Uh, Palpatine's such an interesting puppet master that I might be giving him more credit than he's due. But <laughs> but he's it all fits guy. together so well that this new batch of clones you know, is a lot less well interested in in you know it doesn't have as much like free will even or is more inured to order 66 but it's almost like palpatine knows if there's going to be surprise survivors that are going to lead his troopers they have to hate the jedi too and he's letting them all get a taste of you know what self-righteousness is like when it comes with arrogance too this this that when they were learning as as small clones, when they're staring at the screens, I think one bit of code probably went by Order sixty six, destroy the Jedi, and it moved on. Right, that's when it would have to have been injected mm-hmm. into their psyche. As what, where else would they have done it? Where else would it would it have come from? They're not going to like get a document or an email to pop <laughs> their helmet. And it, well, there's a memo. There's Order 66. You're going to hear about this at some point in the future, and at that point, you're going to turn around and destroy the Jedi that you've been uh, sort of helping, working with, partnering with. You know, all of a sudden that's broken, and now you're going to you're going to kill them. So I think it's been injected into their training when they were just small little clone clonettes. You know, it's interesting that we feel we feel about the the droids in this show a lot of what, times the way that. The Krell feels about the clones. They're expendable. Who cares, right? I mean, when was the last time you thought about what it was like to get cut in half as a super battle droid? Who Nobody thinks, nobody has any empathy for them. And so it's interesting for us to see, you know, they've almost had to interject different types of conflict because having all these battle droids walk straight forward and get mowed down by the clones just isn't interesting. So they almost have to interject these new ways to to keep the story going. But for them to come right back to this sort of like, I mean, everything about these last episodes was so good. The shadow people, all of them looking the same, the the helmets breaking, the weapons were excellent, the sound was excellent, the design was excellent. And honestly, this is what Star Wars is to me, is these, these sorts of spectacle battles, but where there's another message that you need to pay attention to underneath the surface. And really, it's just good writing, bottom line. And that's something that, frankly, after, you know, if you told me in 2012 there was good writing for Star Wars going on, I'd have said, where? Because I wouldn't have been aware of it, and um, it was here as right. It was on Cartoon Network, and I was watching a lot of it back then. Because that's where like Adult Swim was, you know, back in the day. Oh, so this is where this uh, aired on a cartoon. I was wondering. I had to go it around it, on. man. Okay. I was watching that stuff all the time, and it, and I did. Like it's so, man, it's so wild. I I sort. I really feel like I missed out now looking back on. It, it was in between other shows. Like <laughs> it was in between main shows like maybe like on mtv it was in between like a video like video rock videos it was then there'd be clone wars and then they'd move on to something else so you literally it was like a commercial break people would just get up and leave (laughs) (laughs) while all this good content was coming on and everything you guys just get okay this is not what i need to be listening or watching (laughs) i thought it was like a hardy's commercial or something (laughs) 
on silvers and we get up and walk away and come back and the, the videos would be playing right. again. So that's I, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you had to look on the interweb <laughs> to see which episode we're gonna be on. I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't like it is now where you just know you know it's on, it's on, it's on. You know, whenever like Monday night at eight or whatever. It was like. Mm-hmm. It was interspersed in between the other programming. I have, programming. A, I have um, a good authority that if, like, you unplugged your cable box too, like, you wouldn't have a guide for like an hour and a half or whatever. I have it on good authority. I don't know where I got that info from. Really? Yeah, that's what I heard. What I heard. <laughs> yeah, but I remember when it came out because uh, this was when Cartoon Network was bleeding out surging, so they had Toonami on. Um, and this mm. is the, when the Clone Wars came out. I think Star Wars was trying to capitalize. This is when. Dragon Ball Z was, I mean, it's still good, but this is when it was at its height. I believe that's when that Namek saga happened with the Super Saiyan. That's when they did, so that's when when they did DBZ, all... like, uh, the reissue, where they Correct. used the, because um, yeah. they had, like, a bad voice cast for the first 23 episodes, and then, I don't, well, I don't, I know this is a Star Wars podcast, but then they recast it, and now you have the voices you would recognize, and then they had to re-record it all, and that was, that was happening in, 20, in right. 2010. You're absolutely correct. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm a big DBZ fan, so maybe that might be something later. That could be Hitch and Mitch. We could be talking. We could do a watch through a DBZ. It'll be. It'll take forever. It will. Literally, it's 400 oh episodes. I think we're at. But, uh, oh it's my! So long. I don't have. Yeah. I don't have it in here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to yeah. do the highlights. Right, but um, yeah, it's kind of weird because as you're saying, and I remember the show being on. Like Ken said, I came on at like I want to say like a seven o'clock time slot, and with these episodes, the problem with this show was. Cartoon Network's the king, king of like cross promoting. It would come on, a commercial would come on, it would catch my attention, and you know it's just at the time it never caught my eye. It was an animated show. I kind of flash in and see it and be like, eh, yeah, yeah, no, flick it off, and then never really got into it just because of all the content they had. They had Adult Swim coming out in the evening in a couple hours of that seven o'clock hour. It was just maybe it was a time slot, and maybe like I said at that point everybody's kind of checked out in star wars we were there we were kind of in the in the air you know we finished up with everything and hoping years and years later that we would get something else until you know the final you know sequel trilogy came out but it was a point to where you know you were just kind of reading books and you know star wars wasn't as you know people seen as cool as it is now again or as popular well animation too wasn't as respectful well, it was respected in a way. I mean, it took it took a while to build up to a point where you can actually look at something like this. What we're seeing right now, it's a lot right. of adult content, you know, as far as like what we're watching with these episodes and everything. But back then, you're looking, okay, this is just a cartoon. This is it. I mean, yeah, you know? and you're right. This is groundbreaking for, for especially American animation because at the point, the height of animation has always been Japan, you know, the, yeah. the Asian, yeah. the Korea, Korea. So, you know, you know, European and even Asian, you know, animation was at its highest. This is really, you know, not the first, obviously, with stuff we had, but really the first kind of like outside of Batman animated series, a really high end mm-hmm. animated series that was out for, you know, an American company to produce. So, you know, Star Wars kind of went on a limb because it's, this was something that was wasn't popular. It didn't fly off the bat, but I mean, it gained wind. It, 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 I mean, watching these episodes now, it wasn't blatantly trying to sell you a toy, which is what animation was. You know, 22 minutes, you know, they're pretty much selling you a toy, you know, um, for you to go out and buy it, for a kid to buy it. These episodes are not trying to sell you any toy. I mean, if you're a Star Wars fan, you're pretty much, you know, in it to win it anyway. But this, this these episodes are not trying to, like, you know, get you to buy a product. You know, it just basically just keeping you into like the Star Wars, um, you know, uh, mythology and everything. It's really deep because like even things like the Y-Wing is brand new and they're all excited about the Y-Wing bomber. And then we see the Y-Wing is being hopelessly antiquated as soon as like and that's like the first thing. The first like plane we see be like a terrible plane is the Y-Wing. Right. And it's it's interesting to see to see that sort of stuff develop. Um, I, I'm really I'm really interested to see like exactly how how much they're willing to grind down the clones right like how much are they gonna grate the jedi against them man i'm I'm just stoked about about where this show is going and uh when it came out i think i was just so tired of star wars at that point because they had pitched they had just shoved so much of it in our faces and to to ken to ken's point there was a clone wars series before this series that came out in 2005 it's on disney plus now that you should check out it has the original appearance of general grievous in it that was the big thing that they uh, pushed for uh, 
for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. So uh, definitely check that out. It's really good. Fun. That was that 2D anime. Oh yeah, show? man! You get to see all the cool oh, stuff, okay. and like Anakin still has his mm. braid, and you know it's a uh, some really uh, cool stuff. Yeah, I watched a couple episodes of that, and I wasn't really interested. Yeah, it's all right, but that was all the Star Wars there was. You have to remember, there wasn't like any of this other stuff. It's all sort of come out of out of whole cloth, and uh, yeah, it's 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 really interesting. I can't believe that I had this big of a hole in my Star Wars like knowledge that I didn't see any of this, and it's it's really eye opening. Honestly, it's cool. Yeah, and then, and then, you know, kind of closing out the show here, guys. I mean, you know, obviously this wasn't the, the greatest of starts to a season. I mean, I thought, you know, the other three definitely kicked off with a bigger bang. But uh, I, I definitely think these next, uh, we'll call it, we'll, we'll go eight. I know the problem with this next series is, is there's like uh, the, the backside of it, it'll be another cliffhanger. There's really no way to cut out the back half of this season. It kind of all runs into each other. So, I mean, we can stop at 16. It'll kind of leave us on a cliffhanger there, but it's uh, Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's the best way to cut it. We'll go, you know, 9 to 16, and then we'll finish off the last couple there um, the following week, which will be, you know, 17 to 22. So, um, good schedule. Good. But, yeah, guys, uh, definitely good schedule. And, like I said, appreciate everybody uh, coming uh to the stream today definitely checking in with us and uh obviously everybody who's in their car at some point listening to this we appreciate you know obviously you guys having those dialogues on your way home or, or discussions in the car because it's what keeps us going and, and this is keeps definitely all our platforms which um i'm sure you've heard our some of our infomercials about that we want you guys to also subscribe and listen to as there's so many other ways to um you know get our content but uh once again guys i de definitely appreciate everybody uh, coming and uh, watching these uh, series one through eight with us. And we'll be back this week again for nine through 16, uh, part two of season four. So with that being said, guys, um, this is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Nerdcyclopedia.